Hi, Valerie here, your Italy correspondent, and I'm going to talk to you today about something very near and dear to my heart, one of the things that is definitely a benefit about living in Italy, and that's the food. Um, I love food, I love to cook, I love to um, talk about food, <laughs> I love to go shopping for food, I like the um, fresh markets and um, every aspect of it. So I kind of grew up with this appreciation for food. Um, so living in Italy really is one of those great experiences um, in terms of food. And the cuisine here is famous, nobody um, doubts that Italian food is wonderful. I have never met anyone who doesn't love Italian cuisine, so um, it's definitely one of the things that is really high on people's lists. It's also one of the things that's very um, important to Italians. Italians take it very seriously. They love their food. They like to talk about their food. Every conversation is going to come back to food in some manner or another. So um, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. It doesn't matter if you're talking about politics, it's gonna come back to food. If you're talking about sports, it's gonna come back to food. Uh, whatever the subject is, food is never far from it. Um, so if it's, uh, like in the afternoon, I go down for coffee um, and I run into somebody, they're going to ask me, what did you have for lunch? If it's a little later in the day, they're going to ask me, what are you making for dinner? It's always about the food. <laughs> so um, if you really don't care much about food, it might not be the place for you um, because it is something that's very closely held here, something that's very important to Italians, um, and rightfully so. The Mediterranean diet is well known, it's been well researched, um, they say it's one of the healthiest ways um, of eating. Um, Italy has very long, long has a strong longevity, um, one of the longest in the, on the earth, I believe, um, and there's also a very high number of centenarians, so um, obviously it's a very healthy way of eating here in Italy. Um, so. Let's talk about the food. Um, one of my earliest memories literally is about food. So I can remember when I was maybe four years old and my grandmother putting me up on a chair next to the stove as she was making uh, the sauce, the Sunday sauce. She, I had an Italian nana and um, I can very distinctly remember her explaining, this is the oregano, this is the parsley, and she was cooking that Sunday sauce because every Sunday we had to have pasta with red sauce. That was just a, a, an obligatory thing, unless it was a celebration and then we had lasagna. So um, that's kind of how I grew up. I remember very distinctly um, lots of food and lots of um, focus on food in my house. So uh, to me, it's just really a continuity here in Italy and it takes it to a higher level, um, immersing myself in that um, here. Once we moved to Italy, uh, we were staying with some friends. They owned a restaurant in Rome for um, many years and we stayed with them at their uh, summer home in Anzio, south of the city, uh, for three months. And so we would awake every morning to Giorgio in the kitchen. Uh, we would be stumbling downstairs for coffee and he would already be in the kitchen sauteing things, onions and garlic and what have you, cleaning fish, because he would go to the port there in Anzio to buy fish directly from uh, the fishermen as they came in from their night out. Um, and he would buy whatever they had for the fresh catch. And we would wake up to these odors as he was preparing things already uh, first thing in the morning um, for our lunch. And uh, so I really got a great primer into Italian food and how they operate, um, what they think about, how they take um, ingredients, just the fresh ingredients of the day and, and the season and create dishes from it. Um, they're very impromptu sometimes, they're very creative um, and they really do t focus on the seasons, which is a great thing. Um, so that healthiness of it is that you're eating those seasonal vegetables and they use a lot of legumes and um, so it's just a really great way to eat and I've really learned to appreciate even more more um, the Italian creativity and what they do um, so that nothing is ever boring in the kitchen because it's always changing, all of these seasons are changing and they might not make the same dish twice because it's just whatever's on hand and whatever uh, comes into mind as you're cooking. Um, I think one of the great things also about Italian food is the continuity through the centuries and actually through the millennia because there are dishes that are still being eaten here in Italy that date back to the Roman period or even before the Romans. So for example, here in my region of Basilicata, the sausages that we eat are called Lucanica uh, and it was given that name by the ancient Romans because they came and um, overtook this area from the Lucani people uh, who had been inhabiting this land. Uh, and they encountered these sausages, and so they called it Lucanica because it was made by the Lucani people. And the sausages are still made the same way as they were back then. Um, 
all by hand. Our neighbors still do it. We've watched them. Um, it's one of those great foods that is just, it's literally been around for um, more than two millennium. Another one of those dishes is um, called Colatura di Alici. Uh, this is from Cetara. It's a small town uh, about an hour and a half from us on the Amalfi Coast. Uh, and Cetara is famous for this Colatura di Alici, which is made from anchovies. So they take the fresh cut anchovies and they clean them and then they put them in layers, um, anchovies and salt in this round wooden container and they put a press on top. And um, that press creates then this juice, this liquid that drains off is the colatura, and it's like an amber colored liquid. And they use that on pasta or in rice dishes or drizzle it over um, just freshly grilled fish. Uh, and it's one of those things that literally has been around um, since the Roman period. Uh, they found some shipwrecks uh, off the coast with these uh, clay jars or clay amphora that had this um, liquid in it, this kind of sauce, this fish sauce. So um, they know that it has very ancient roots and it's still being carried on again, just like it has been, um, had been made during the Roman times. Um, another dish, my friend in Rome that had the restaurant, um, he said that uh, Contra Pepe, a very famous Roman dish, is as old as the Colosseum. Uh, and it's a very basic kind of dish, so it's the um, pasta, spaghetti, and usually is what they use with pecorino cheese and fresh cracked pepper. And then they use some water from the cooking of the pasta to make it a creamy um, kind of sauce that goes onto this pasta. And um, he swears to me that this dish was also around during the Roman times. Um, so everywhere you go, there's going to be some of these dishes that connect that area to history and I think that's a really cool thing when you think about it that you're really um, still dining in this um, way that has just continued and continued and continued and so many of the food traditions here in Italy are um, that kind of a continuity that it's just centuries old traditions they still make cheeses and um, prosciuttos and salamis and things the way they've just been made for many many centuries um, and so why muck with something that's uh, being done right and it's been proven uh, and it's just really delicious um, as you move around Italy things change so you never get bored because every region does have their own specialties. So what you eat here in Basilicata is different than what you're going to eat in Rome and it's different than what you're going to eat in Tuscany and it's different than what you're going to eat um, in the northern regions, let's say in Veneto. So um, here they call it cucina povera, that sort of peasant tradition is one of the, uh, really gave us a lot of the dishes here in Basilicata. There's not a, they do eat meat, of course, um, but it's not as meat heavy as some of the northern um, regions. So Emilia Romagna that's very focused on meats. Um, but Silicata really isn't so much. They do, our neighbors still raise a pig, they still slaughter it, and they make all of the salamis, the soprasata, the capacolo, and all of those things from their pig. Um, so they do eat in the pancetta and such. Um, but it's, a lot of it is more of the flavoring agents. They'll use the pancetta in to flavor something or sausage to flavor something. Um, and they do have a nice grill. Sometimes they like to just fire up the grill and throw the sausages and pork chops or whatever on the grill as well. But um, by and large, a lot of the daily things that you eat are very um, fresh and vegetable based and legume based. Um, they do a lot of soups in this region um, because of this, these traditions um, of being poor. And so they would throw whatever they had in season and whatever beans and such they had into the pot. Um, so that's really nice in the winter. I, I really like a warming soup. Um, and so it's nice that they do have those traditions here and they vary a lot. Um, we have a lot of stuffed vegetables. That's a big tradition here. They like they can take anything and stuff it with something. So they take any kind of vegetable, be it tomatoes and zucchini and onions and um, eggplant or whatever peppers, um, and then they just do all these different kinds of stuffings. There might be meat in them. There might not be. Sometimes it's um, stale, couple day old bread that they crumble up um, with sauteed vegetables and a couple of eggs and they put that in and maybe some cheese grated and they put that inside of these vegetables and bake them. Um, so there's really a lot of things that you find here that you don't necessarily find in other regions. Um, you go next door to Puglia, they've got some wonderful um, food traditions there. I love the cooking in Puglia. I think it's one of the top in the country myself. Um, they do wonderful things with fish. I love how Puglia makes seafood because they're surrounded by sea. Uh, they really know what they're doing with, with the seafood. 
One of the things that I love there is, um, and you find it also in Campania over on the other coast, um, they take a whole fish, so maybe like a, a small sea bass or something, and they cover it in salt um, and they bake it. And that salt creates a crust and it keeps the fish so succulent and moist. And then they crack it open and they take the fish out and you open the fish and you clean it and it doesn't make it salty at all. It just really seals in the juices and it makes for an amazing um, fish dish. Um, in Puglia they also make a tiella, which is probably derived from a type of a paella. So it's a rice-based dish with um, potatoes and mussels and it's baked and it's really good and it's something that you basically only find over there in Puglia. Um, as you go over towards Naples and Campania, some of the classic dishes that we associate with Italy come from there. So the melanzana, the um, parmigiana di melanzana, the eggplant parmesan, um, brajol that's uh, those rolled up beef or pork cutlets that are um, then stewed in tomato sauce, um, the lasagna, and a lot of the dishes that um, I think most of us associate with um, Italy um, have their roots over there. So if you're a foodie, if you want to come to Italy and you want to really focus on the food, I suggest you start your trip in Naples because it's also the birthplace of pizza. So who doesn't love that? Um, and so you can eat, well, you can spend a week and never eat the same thing twice um, in any of the restaurants there um, as you're doing your kind of foodie tour around Naples or the Campania region. Um, but really anywhere you go in Italy, you're gonna eat well. You go to the north and they've got different influences. Their dishes are completely different. They use a lot more polenta, they use a lot more rice, they use a lot more butter than we use in the south. So it's a little bit heavier um, in that respect. Um, they use fondues and cheeses uh, mixed into things, um, but there's some really wonderful foods up in the north. As you go to the very extreme north, there's going to be influences from Germany and Austria, and as you go to the um, northwest, there's influences from France. So um, really, it's a wonderful thing as you travel around Italy because everything is different and you really get a sense of place by eating the dishes that are local to that region so um, be sure to try those instead of just ordering what's familiar when you go to a trattoria or a restaurant um, ask what the local dishes are ask what's really that localized thing because a lot of um, areas not just the region but a lot of times it's even specific towns or a collection of towns have dishes that are their own um, and so it's really a great kind of keepsake to take home that taste of the place you visited um, and really sample the local foods. Of course, the local wines pair well with the local foods. So uh, be sure to sample what the wines are in each region as well, um, because those change from region to region too. And you'll find that the wines that they grow in that region um, just match perfectly the foods that they're eating. So um, again, if you're in um, let's say Piemonte, then drink the wine from Piemonte. Don't order something that comes from the south. And if you're in the south, don't order a Barolo, order uh, the Alianico or whatever the wine is for the region that you're uh, visiting. So you really get that uh, sense of place and that taste of the place where you're visiting. Um, I hope that this has been helpful and informative. Um, I guess I should probably also tell you though that Italian food also has an order to things. So um, they take it very seriously. They don't like all their food globbed up on one plate. Um, so as you go to an Italian restaurant or if you're dining with friends, you're going to see they do the same thing at home. They don't put everything on one plate. It's all divided up into courses. So you're going to start with your antipasto and then the primo, which is your rice or uh, your risotto or pasta. Uh, or polenta or a soup maybe. Then you get your secondo, which is your main dish, uh, either meat or fish or chicken or whatever. Uh, and then the contorno, and then uh, that's your vegetable and your salad. And then you've got your um, dessert and your fruit and your cafe, and then your amatza cafe, which is that digestive thing at the end of the meal, maybe like a limoncello or an herbal brew, a herbal type of um, liqueur that they serve at the end of the meal. And they call it the amatza cafe because then it kills the coffee. It's your coffee killer and it balances everything out to end the meal with. Um, and so they really like to stick to those courses and they like 
to just sit down and have a really leisurely meal. So um, don't be surprised if um, Italian meals last for three and four hours. It's kind of a norm on a Sunday. Or um, if you're invited for a lunch or a dinner, they really want to make it leisurely and they want to um, spend that time together. So that's something that's very important to Italian culture as well. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful. I hope um, that this makes you appreciate Italian food even more, especially as you come to Italy and you're traveling around. Um, so if you've got questions, be sure to let me know and let me know what you're eating.